Hi everyone, I'm Des Phoebe and welcome to another episode of the Franchise Entrepreneur. Right, today um, I want to talk to you about something that appeared on my LinkedIn feed just a few days ago. And it was someone that actually been listening to some of the content that I put out, some of the podcasts that I put out, and they seem to be under the impression that, that I'm advocating that franchising is a, an easy route and that it somehow becomes passive income very quickly. And that it's, uh, it's a, an easy route to the lifestyle you want. Now, I don't believe that's the kind of message that I am putting out there. I am saying to people they should consider franchising as part of their opportunity, part of their portfolio of investments. And it's a, an opportunity to grow your business and use other people's money in order to do it. Now, of course, if you do it well, you can get to a point where the income becomes more passive doesn't become completely passive you know not unless you're you're very much at the very top and the pinnacle of the, that pyramid you still have to work hard it's like any business it's no different from any other business you know I certainly don't want to put the, the message out there that this is just um, this is easy you know the facts are that you are more likely to be successful in your business and it's less likely to go under if you follow the franchise model those are those are the facts that are are out there in the in the trade press they're in the bfa you know those are the st stats that they put out they're not mine but i do agree with them they're there for a reason uh, they support the argument that if you go down the franchise route whether you're buying a franchise or whether you are indeed turning your business into a franchise you're likely to be more successful because you're following a tried and tested system you don't have to look at my business. You don't. You know. You can just look down the high street and see the likes of McDonald's and news agents and estate agents, accountancy firms, funeral parlors, gyms. You know, the list goes on and on and on. There are so many examples of successful franchising. But it did. It did kind of strike a chord with me that you know, I didn't want to be putting the message across that this was you know somehow very easy to achieve and that all of a sudden lifestyle that you've dreamt of is there in front of you and you're earning loads of money and it was just so easy you just set up your franchise and away you went if only if only you know i've been doing this for 12 years and although it's given me a good living you know i'm probably a good few years away from um, where i'd like to be where i could turn around and say yeah okay look this has become not quite passive, but it's got as close to passive as you could probably uh, imagine. And that passive income only comes about through through scale. It doesn't come in the first couple of years or the first few years, not unless you're amazingly lucky. You know, we're just getting to a point now where, you know, we've signed a London master franchise, um, a master franchise for Portugal. We're in discussions with a number of other parties to take it overseas to various countries which hopefully in the next few weeks I might have some good news to share with people. Because once you've got overseas partners and you've trained them and they become you over in those countries as a master franchise, you have an agreement for X amount of stores over, over a certain period of time. Your involvement in those stores is, is minimal. You know, it's more of an overseeing. They become you over there and you take a percentage of every sale and and every new franchise that they bring in. And that becomes relatively passive because you're not having to do an awful lot um, to earn, earn that income. And it's it generally goes straight to your bottom line because not only are you not having to do anything, your team are not having to expand in order to support it because it's self-contained and it's the responsibility for the master franchise to do it themselves. So that's when it becomes more passive. It becomes more passive when you've got master franchises that take locations or whole regions so our london franchise is signed up for 39 stores i think for for 10 years could be extended to 50 stores over that period now they they are me in london and um, apart from a few meetings and some support services that my team provide that becomes relatively passive they bring in more sub franchises and we get a proportion of the the um, fees that they raise now, that's where you want to get to. Um, if you are running your own stores and you've got a combination of running your own stores 
and a number of smaller franchises that you're responsible for, that absolutely isn't passive. You know, they need a lot of managing. So I hope that I haven't come across in such a way that I'm suggesting that it's a quicker route and it's a, well, sorry, it is a quicker route, but I don't want it to sound as if it's uh, it's literally just around the corner. There's a lot of work that has to go into franchising. It's just that the model itself is designed to help you expand and grow and scale your business a lot more quickly than if you were doing it yourselves and a lot cheaper for you than you would if you were doing it yourself. You know, I've stated on many occasions the huge advantages of using the franchise model and I stick with that. It is very well tried and tested. Sometimes you're not going to be able to persuade people to accept what you're you're saying sometimes. Sometimes people just really have got ingrained thoughts and opinions on on certain industries. I know certainly that franchising has had its its critics um, over the years, and sometimes that's been about the people who have been operating them. Um, and I'm not just talking about the people who are selling franchises, but the people who work in the support services, like the consultants, and even the BFAs had its criticism over the years. I've been one of its critics, but you know, overall, it is a, a very sound system. It is unregulated, other than the BFA as a self-appointed regulator. So you are always going to have some individuals who maybe give it a bad name. But those are, you know, they are fairly few and far between. I think, you know, one of the biggest criticisms I've, you know, ever, ever seen really is, is the, the tendency of being overcharged by consultants taking advantage of people who are wanting to franchise their business or people who are looking to franchise business. And that's a common complaint. It, you know, it is. I see it all the time. People will come to me and say, oh, well, I went to a, such and such consultant and they wanted X amount of money in order to franchise. And, you know, it's laughable sometimes, but unfortunately it's people taking advantage of, of others and it's common within any, any industry. It's, you know, it's, it's prevalent within the training industry as well. I'm not sure what you do about that. The only thing you can do is educate people to do more due diligence and, uh, and to shop around. And just because someone's got a qualification behind their name does not mean that you're necessarily going to get a good deal from them. But in terms of selling the dream, you know, franchising is a tool in order to help you to achieve maybe some of the things that you want to achieve. And it's nothing more. It is what it is. It's it's another tool in your toolbox to enable you to succeed if implemented properly. You know, I think the best way to use franchising is if you can, if you've got a job and you've got some investments and you've got your house and things like that, is to treat franchising in in the same regard and use it as and think of it as another investment. If you're lucky enough to be in that position, then it can be part of your portfolio of investments and you can bolt on other franchises as, as you go. Alternatively, if you're looking for, you know, a break from the corporate world or the, you know, working for someone else and it's you want to be self-employed, then it's a great way of doing it. Because, as I said, you know, you're, you know, three to five times more likely to be successful. You're using someone else's model that's been tried and tested. You're reducing your risk and you can earn a good living from it. So, you know, it fits in in so many different categories for people who might be interested in franchising. You know, from pensioners who want a hands-off investment, you know, look around for the, the type of franchise that can either be managed by the franchisor on your behalf, or you can appoint a, a manager to run it for you. Just make sure you're factoring in that additional cost on the financial side of it. Or, you know, you can be someone that's working full-time and you see this as a, an add-on to your portfolio of investments just as it's exactly the same as you might think of it as a, a property investment you know because you can make 15 20 percent returns on franchising you know which stacks up against any property investment that you might do or any shares so you know picking the right franchise and i do emphasize picking the right franchise can work for you in that regards as well so you know again as i said before i'm not selling the dream i'm selling the opportunity to attain that dream and there's a big difference 
if you don't if you don't follow the process and you don't make the right decisions and you don't do your due diligence then you know you could it could you know it might not work for you but that's the same for anything else so i don't accept certainly that all i'm doing is selling the dream and making out something that is easier than it actually is because i said it many times before my franchise um, entrepreneur podcast and i've said it many times on social media that this is not for the faint hard hit you do have to be committed and you do have to make the right choices find the right franchise partners but it is a fantastic opportunity and if you can mix it with some of your other portfolio investments it's a very good addition so yeah i guess it's a little bit of a rant from from me this week it just kind of ticked me off a little bit that someone posted something like that on uh, my linkedin messages and uh, i thought i'd uh, share that with you and clarify where i'm coming from you know it's not about selling an unrealistic dream it's about selling an opportunity but like every opportunity you need to look at it and make your own assessment of it so look i hope you found this one a bit different i hope i'm clarifying the, the situation to especially to the person that raised the question and to anyone else that might feel that i maybe wasn't clear in previous podcasts and social medias etc also just uh, an update on my dodo documentary we're now getting to the interesting stage where it's actually starting to move on landlords have done most of their landlord works it's due to be handed over to us in about two weeks time and just over which is really exciting and we're now just really prepping the ground and getting things organized so we can hit the ground running and get in there and start getting the work done i can start talking to the breweries in the next two weeks after half term to get that organized and a lot of other suppliers as well we've done a lot of work on equipment and furniture and things like that some of the carpentry but yeah we've got a lot to get done in in the period between march and about the 15th of may when we're looking to open but in between then business goes on um, we're making progress on our master franchise in london they've signed four new franchises which is taking you know it's taken some time it's taken nearly a year to get traction but that's that's happening and they should be opening up their first one in the next couple of months which is great i think they're actually going to surpass their target for the year which is great because they were behind last year because as i said it takes a bit of time to gain traction but i think they're going to surpass that now uh, so that's really exciting and we've got some really interesting discussions that we're in with overseas um, opportunities i'm hoping at, at least one of those will come off over the next two to three months but you know you have to wait and see because if there's one thing i've learned with overseas um, negotiations is that they can twist and turn a dozen times before uh, before you get any real commitment from them but yeah I'm, I'm hopeful i'm certainly hopeful that we will get at least a couple of overseas master franchises signed up this year which would be brilliant for our noodle bar brand walk and go so yeah it's going to be a lot of work and in addition to all of that i'm moving home in a couple of months as well so you know i'm a sucker for stress if nothing else I've also been doing some uh, a lot of personal development courses, Progressive Success, which is a training company down in Peterborough. Really, really good. I've done a public speaking course, which was intensive for a week, and I've joined their academy now. So I'm hoping to do some public speaking gigs. So if anyone knows of anything, then do hit me up and give me some details. And, you know, hopefully it'd be great to come along to any events that maybe you're hosting or know of or anything that might be of interest, anything to do with business, entrepreneurship, franchising, small businesses, even or even if it's just telling a story. I don't mind. Uh, I want to get loads of practice in. I've also joined a load of networking events as well which I'm hoping to launch my first mentorship mastermind course in the next couple of months and also an online course as well, which is new to me. So yeah, I'm fitting in an awful lot this this year and a lot of it seems to be weighted to the first part of the year. So yeah, I'm a bit of a sucker really for stress, I think. So if I'm still around for the latter part of the year, I haven't killed myself through stress then uh, it's going to be an interesting year. 
Okay, look, I hope you found it interesting. I hope you didn't mind me having a little bit of a rant. Please leave your comments, suggestions, and, you know, I will always listen to those and try and implement any improvements that we can. Anyone you know of that may wish to be interviewed that might be of interest to the community, then, again, yeah, please let us know. And I will speak to you again next week. So don't forget to not let your reality get in the way of your dreams.